You may have heard of forever chemicals and how they are found basically everywhere now, including in 99% of Americans' blood. But what are these chemicals exactly, and why are they forever? In March 2023, the Environmental Protection Agency proposed strict regulations for six out of the thousands of forever chemicals, or PFAS, in drinking water. Now, PFAS may be most famous for being used to make nonstick pants, but PFAS are found in a lot of things, including biking gear, takeout containers, paper straws, dental floss, and even the wax paper you use to pick up donuts. They get into the environment mainly through industrial pollution and PFAS-containing firefighting foam sinking into the ground. They're linked to cancers, problems during pregnancy, and many other health-related effects, even at exposure levels so low that we can't even measure them, according to the EPA. PFAS is a term used to describe this entire family of forever chemicals and stands for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, which means that these compounds just have a lot of carbon-fluorine bonds. Because fluorine is all the way up in the corner of the periodic table, it's really electronegative, which means it really wants electrons. And because carbon is willing to give fluorine electrons, it grabs on tight to them and doesn't want to let go. This is one of the strongest and least reactive bonds in nature, meaning that PFAS are the perfect nonstick material, but also really hard to destroy. There are thousands of PFAS out there. That's because there are so many different combinations of carbon and fluorine, not to mention oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur, which gives us this alphabet soup of different PFAS called PFOA, PFOS, PFBA, etc. Scientists now understand how to get PFAS out of water, and many water treatment plants will likely install ion exchange resins and activated carbon filters to comply with the EPA regulations once they're finalized. But one of the biggest problems now is trying to figure out what to do with PFAS once we've gotten them out of the water. Research has shown that most incinerators don't burn hot enough to actually destroy PFAS, and they end up just getting blown around the community in which the incinerator is located. Scientists are working on ways to destroy PFAS without just breaking them down into smaller bits of PFAS. So far, the most promising ways are hydrothermal alkaline treatment and supercritical water oxidation, which basically just pressure cook PFAS into oblivion. Researchers are also working on other ways to degrade PFAS at milder conditions, but whether those will be able to be used in the real world is still being investigated. 